Uh, my name is Andy Huang, the incoming chairman for Hawaii Restaurant Association and vice president and chief operating officer for LNL Hawaiian Barbecue. Mahalo for joining me today on Restaurants of Hawaii on the Think Tech platform. I'll be your host today as Cheryl is traveling. The Hawaii Restaurant Association and its extensive community have been actively involved in the recovery effort in Maui due to the devastating wildfire in August 2023. The HRA has been partnering with various organizations on the ground in Maui, as well as other parts of the state and afar to support the rebuilding process of the affected Lahaina residents and business. Today, we're honored to have two guests on the show who are both Maui residents and active community members. They have been spending their days and nights providing extensive help to support the relief and rebuild their beloved town that was taken from the fire. Pam and Tamara come to the show today and for the first hand experience and in the, of the devastation in Maui, sharing what they have been able to do so far for the community in terms of relief and what they think the Maui community needs the most moving forward. First, we have Pam, and could you please introduce yourself? Yes, my pleasure. My name is Pamela Tumpa, and I am the president of the Maui Chamber of Commerce. And we also have uh, Tambra, please introduce yourself. Aloha, my name is Tambra Garrick. I'm the chief marketing officer for Maui Gold Pineapple. I also um, do serve on the board of directors for the Hawaii Restaurant Association and also the Maui Chamber of Commerce. Great. So we have a first question for you, Pam. Um, please share with our members and viewers, how has the Maui Chamber been able to support the local community since the wildfire devastation? You know, it, this has been a devastation unlike any we've seen before. Um, the first thing we did was go back to what we started with in COVID, start bringing all the resource information together to be a hub. Uh, we then started checking on people to see, you know, where our members were, and it was a challenge, um, even connecting with Tambra because they they didn't have cell phone service, and I know my first call, she was hiked up a mountain to get some cell phone service, and we were so grateful to find her, and so we started looking uh, to find out where our members were at. Uh, we then immediately proceeded with trying to do what was requested of us, which is drive everybody to FEMA first and then drive them to the SBA to start getting registered for help and then working out and sorting with them how these different programs and educating the business community on how those programs could benefit them. Um, what we learned in this environment was that people, you know, those businesses who survived in Lahaina, all, most of them already had SBA loans because again, we're so dependent on the visitor industry. And we learned very quickly, another loan is not the kind of help that they need to survive. So a lot of messaging with government, working with the mayor, the governor, uh, congressional leaders, and, and directly with the SBA and others. Um, we've been also working on housing opportunities because we see, and we saw during COVID an exodus of, of um, our families and our workers when you know they, they just um, were on unemployment for long periods of time where they didn't know how they were going to survive. So of course, that's a critical issue right now. Um, we are trying to fundraise for um, businesses impacted by the fires directly. Um, and, and we are doing that at mauichamber.com and all money without any uh, admin fee being taken out will go to help affected businesses. Uh, and we're working on solutions with government leaders and those on the ground uh, and helping with donations and other kinds of assistance and trying to figure out ways to get it to them just in time. We've had a little bit of a challenge with some of our supply issues and, and understanding what's where at different points in time. So looking at helping with holistic systems so we can better get things at the right place. Um, and Tamara can tell you more about that because she's been on the front lines dealing with all the donations and sorting and, and distributing. And so she has a lot more knowledge in that area. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, and who knows, like, you know, we never experienced this before. So we didn't know like the power is gonna go out and the cell phone service is going out. Like, you know, it's very 
important for somebody who can have the knowledge and, and, and have the resources to gather together and help the, the people who it needs. That that's really amazing. Uh, thank you so much. And and, and Tamara, you know, you've been on the front line since day one of the wildfire devastation, you know, experienced the first hand changing uh, needs of everyone affected, including yourself and your businesses, right? Now, are you seeing positive impact in the community with the growing number of support donations of the, you know, the islands receiving? Thanks for the question, Andy. And I think, um, first of all, I just want to make sure that we acknowledge that there are a lot of residents and businesses also impacted in the Kula um, area, um, not just in Lahaina. Um, so this really, you know, and then the economic impacts are island-wide and perhaps even statewide, some could say. Um, I think, you know, what I saw was really similar to what we saw in 2018 after Hurricane Lane. The immediate response is community for community. So it was local business owners, neighbors, residents, immediately stepping into action. And that's exactly what I was a part of in 2018. In 2018, I was um, the chief marketing officer um, for a restaurant group statewide. And so obviously my focus then was really, really focused on feeding people. Um, we had very similar to um, this disaster, restaurants donating um, and you know making sure that people got meals every single day um, and getting that organized. This disaster was obviously a much larger scale. Um, we did see that immediate response happening to make sure that people got fed. But without that infrastructure of the internet and cell service, I didn't, and you know, we didn't have power for a week. I didn't have internet at my house for two and a half weeks. Um, cell service extremely spotty. Um, you know, we were all up at the Kapalua airport standing on one leg to try to get information out to folks. Um, and so I just want to acknowledge the incredible efforts that I saw um, day in and day out. Um, literally the morning after the fire, um, the fish market um, that's right here in Honokwai, the, uh, the manager is my neighbor and she said, Tamara, there's no power, everything's closed, people are hungry. And we had a lot of folks that had evacuated from Lahaina um, in their car or literally on foot, um, hanging, in a, in, hanging at the Honokwai Beach Park, just really not knowing what to do. Um, but we knew that getting them something warm to eat um, would be that sort of initial first step. And so we, she went, she opened the freezer, she was able to speak to the owner and we just started barbecuing hamburgers and walking around and handing them out. And so that was like literally, literally within hours. And now we are seeing additional support come in, um, but the support that is going to be needed, I don't even think we know how much support that we need. And it is going to be, I mean, to me, astronomical, the amount of help and support that we're going to be able to need to support families and businesses that were impacted by this. And this is going to be a long recovery. Um, and so we hope that people remember to continue to support, to continue to advocate for people that lost their homes, um, people that lost their businesses, um, in light of the fact that we were barely getting out of COVID um, on this island. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so since you're talking about, you know, all the support and the supplies that, you know, uh, people are donating, what do you think is the number one needed items for the general community? We money. Have, yeah, money. 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 Money, money, money. We need money. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's, That's it. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, honestly, please do not mail us any more clothes, world. <laughs> we have nowhere to put them. We live on an island. We need very little clothing here. So, <laughs> oh, um, and, yeah, you know, food, and, and, food and clothing, it's, well, we, that was the immediate need, of course. And, and I, and I never want to discourage folks from giving from their heart and, and wanting to help a thousand percent, but we have met those immediate needs. People have a fresh pair of slippers on their feet. For the most part, they have clothing. Um, we are continuing to see restaurants, organizations um, get people prepared meals if they don't have a kitchen and or um, fresh, fresh produce is still being brought in from Oahu, Kauai um, to help supplement um, 
my company is, is partnering with Common Ground Collective and the Maui Food Bank to put together fresh produce boxes that we're delivering every single week. So, we, you know, we have that, but now really to get to that next level is, as Pam touched on, housing. Well, we can't get housing if we don't have money um, and people have lost everything, their job, their house, their car. Um, we've got them some clothes and some food, and now we really need to figure out a plan for housing so they can get back to work, and they're going to need money to do that. Thank you so much for sharing that, you know. Um, so, you know, Pam, like, you know, which organization do you think are providing the most efficient recurring effort to Maui, and how can we support them? Well, the good news is that Maui has um, a plethora of outstanding social service organizations. And I used to run Maui United Way, and of course, Maui United Way is one of them. Many people hear about Hawaii Strong from Hawaii Community Foundation, the Maui Food Bank, the Salvation Army, the Red Cross. Um, all of those organizations have been receiving a, a lot of money, which is awesome. And, and it's all going to be needed. And, and we don't, you know, we like Tamara said, and, and we're so thankful for the outpouring of donations. But at this point, as we move forward, what we really need to have is sort of just in time things mm -hmm. donated. And the best way to do that actually is through cash where the community can say, this is what we need and plan for it and have the money to be able to get it in just in time. So they're not having to store things in areas where they don't have any more room or store things that are not needed or not going to be needed for six months or maybe a year at this point. So it's all a, a moving target. This is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and, and we're really working with people to understand that. Um, and also understand that with our messaging, you know, the International Monetary Fund and the World Health Organization back in COVID said, when you have a health and humanitarian crisis and an economic crisis, you have to deal with them both in tandem. You have mm -hmm. to get people back to work, keep the economy going, keep the system moving while also addressing the health and humanitarian side. It needs to be done in conjunction. And, and so we really, the thing that we need to do is help do that. And so that's why the chamber for those who understand the economic engine and want to contribute directly to those who businesses that were most impacted. Some of the, our businesses are looking at ground zero again, like the day they first opened their business, but some of them can pivot. And some of the funding that we've told is coming out has been slow and they needed it yesterday um, because in the meantime they're having to furlough their employees and of course it's been a bit of a landslide um, across the island businesses are being impacted but we're starting with those at ground zero and looking at how we can help them so donating donating to all of those other humanitarian efforts is awesome um, but it, that will get money to people and families we're seeing a lot of money go there and that that will still need to be going forward, but we encourage people to look at where they're giving and look at like uh, Maui Strong Hawaii Community Foundation has a donation tracker. Look at how they're getting that money out and where it's going and that'll help give you a sense of the pulse. Um, but giving the cash gives our community that opportunity to stagger things when we need it. Our businesses have been extraordinarily generous. Um, our neighbor islands, have been extraordinarily generous wanting to support us. Even when the Big Island also had a fire at the same time, they too were very generous in giving to the chamber. And, um, and our efforts right now, knowing that the social service side is covered, very well covered, um, we're focusing on getting businesses back to business and getting their employees back to work. And then the housing issue, of course, which is desperately needed. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I can only imagine that these people, like how, you know, they have to be covered from the fire, the, the house got burned down, the business got burned down. I, I'm sure that, it, you know, it impacted their uh, mental health too, right? So Tambra, like, Absolutely. you know, the residents of Maui, as we can only imagine, have been traumatized. How, you know, are, are there reliable resources available for the community and that you can suggest to help manage the victims' emotional and mental health? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, September was Suicide Prevention Month, and I think that this is something um, that we need to be looking at and um, talking about moving forward. Um, 
I had mentioned in 2018, a lot of my um, volunteer work was around feeding people and interesting during this disaster, a lot of my initial volunteer work um, was partnered um, with some doctors and um, health professionals at each of these community hubs that popped up. And so um, I was transporting patients um, from where they might be staying at a hotel to get uh, medical treatment. Um, I, in fact, I just got a call this morning to um, transport um, a, a woman to a medical appointment tomorrow um, at a resort in Kanapali. So this is still happening. It's still ongoing. Um, one of the coolest partnerships that our company did, Maui Gold Pineapple, um, we got a call from the Department of Health from uh, Mr. John Oliver, and he was he is very aware that mental health um, is something we need to be looking into, um, and, and he was seeing that immediately. So he had the idea to get carts that he was able to get donated from Hawaiian Airlines, and they're calling them Kukua carts. And him and his team from the Department of Health are literally going up and down the hallways at resorts where families are still living um, and, and going door to door. And they have information about health services, mental health services. And we are providing them with fresh cut Maui Gold Pineapple, which is sort of this like bridge to open up the conversation. Um, and interestingly enough, he's been reporting back. Uh, we've still been doing it every week. He calls to place a new order that it's been pretty successful to get that conversation started. And what we need to remember is that people aren't necessarily going to be always reaching out. We need to be reaching out to them. And I um, am so confident in our Department of Health, Mental Health Kokua, the services that Pam mentioned that we do have available on island. Um, but we all need to be talking about it and helping to make those connections. Um, asking people, having the information that you can immediately text to someone or email to someone, and really just, you know, being there with a hug and an ear to listen and making sure that people have the information that they need that support, that it's there and it's available. I totally agree with you that, you know, uh, a lot of times it's, for, it's hard for them to reach out to to yeah. for help right and it's always good that you have friends around you and if you recognize somebody needs help you can always help them out uh, reach out to them that's that's going to be way more effective than uh, waiting for them to reach out you know th thank you for sharing that Tamara. um so you know pam uh, we know our number one industry is tourism right you know since that has slowed down the past months and expected to continue over the holiday season how can the community support Maui business you know, until tourism picks up again? Well, I think the greatest thing that you can do is recognize that um, a lot of the island has been open. And now we're seeing uh, the far west part of West Maui also reopening. But come to Maui. Come and there's, there's ways that you can get involved. You can come and stay with us. And enjoy the beautiful island. We're finding that the people who are coming back, the visitors, are, are we're already seeing a little bit of an uptick. It's not the rebound that everybody saw back during COVID, um, which scared some of the community because some of our members thought they were going to be displaced. Uh, so the families were concerned, but that's not going to happen. And come and visit with us. The other thing that you can do is you can shop online and look for locally made products, which is a huge help. Uh, we are also doing, this year was our 10th annual Made in Maui County Festival on November 3rd and 4th. We were already planning a bigger outreach to find um, wholesale buyers and distributors and retailers across the U.S. mainland and in Japan. And now that's taken on even more importance because so many of our small manufacturers, if they, some of them lost everything in the fire and called and said, please do this event. Um, others um, lost everything, but are, are able to still participate in the event and said, we're, we're rebuilding. And many people sold in the town and it was a huge retail area. So we're helping those companies and we're definitely going to do the festival so you can participate near and far. Tune in and, and watch what we're doing for the Made in My County Festival. Go and shop online with those vendors. Um, but the other big thing is recognizing that every little bit helps and you know we are gonna we're working on uh, an idea of how we can how you can adopt a business and how you can help support people who are trying to get back on their feet as well 
And our economy is going to take a long time to recover. And we're going to be recovering in new and different ways. But that magic of Maui is still here. The spirit of aloha that brings everybody back and has them cherish the island is here. It's in full force while we take care of Lahaina as they're recovering. But so many beautiful places to see. I think people are going to be shocked because sometimes people have their favorite place to stay. But as they come and explore new areas, they're going to see so many other amazing treasures. And that's a way that you can really be a part of the experience and help us out. Um, and, and I do want to point out, again, Thanksgiving is coming up. Christmas is coming up. Maybe gift cards. Uh, for those people, you know, uh, that have been displaced, uh, help them get some food and things that they can shop and enjoy a, a wonderful holiday season uh, with their families when they've lost everything. There's so many things that they need and, and maybe some different gift cards for restaurants, for retail, um, you know, just open visa cards would be a huge help this holiday season for many of those families. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, you know, like, uh, as and Tamara, I know she's also a business owner, right? As a business owner, you know, what what do you think the most needed item right now? Um, you know, anything to add onto what Pam just did just mentioned? Sure. Um, and just to be clear, I don't own Maui Gold. Uh, the owner of Maui Gold is Mr. Todd Domic, who I work for. Um, so, um, but I, I'm happy to support um, lots of uh, Maui small businesses um, through my service on boards and then also um, through the company that I work for um, in the ag space, ag tourism um, and retail. And so I think for businesses, uh, Pam alluded to it earlier, we um, had convened a meeting of small business owners. Um, I don't remember when it was after the fire, but, you know, maybe a couple of weeks or so after the fire and everyone said, you know, like, like to, Tam, to Pam's point, um, they already had SBA loans. They had idle loans. They weren't prepared to take on any additional loans. And so businesses need grant money. Um, there was a grant discussed, and I know that they, you know, there are some Maui agencies that are trying to work through what that application process is going to be. But in the meantime, um, that money um, that could have been used to maybe put on it as a down payment or a deposit for a new location um, might come too late for some businesses. There was a, a recent article um, online talking about Cheeseburger in Paradise, which was located on French Street. Um, they are potentially looking to pivot to move to Wailea. Um, but, and then there was also, you know, talk of a, an art gallery that they're, they're just, they don't know how they're going to make it. So businesses need grant money and that needs to come, you know, from county, state and federal level. And it, it needs to um, be a large dollar amount for it to make an impact. Mm -hmm. Now, thank you for sharing what we're, you know, there's a lot more to discuss. I know the, uh, the, the recovery efforts continue. We have to continue the recovery effort. It's, it's a long-term process. It's, it's like um, Pam said, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, uh, as we come close to the end of the show, um, anything else you want to add for a minute or anything? I think just thank you. Thank you to the Restaurant Association. Thank you to every farm, every restaurant, every individual that is supporting Maui what, you know, in any way, shape, or form. Um, we need your support, and we're so grateful for your support. Great. Thank you. And I, I know number one needed item, it's money. So <laughs> donation, everybody. Yes. Sorry um, to say, but it's the truth. <laughs> it, yeah. It, it really is. And, and I and I think that that's the thing that people want most is they want to make sure that what they give is effective and that'll that'll help because that's the one thing that allows us to spread it over to changing needs and the needs are still changing daily. And so th that helps the most. Yes. Thank you, Pam and Tamara for coming onto the show. Um, this is the end. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is the organization uh, on the phone unifying, representing, and supporting the Hawaii restaurant and food service industry. Thank you very much for our guests today, and thank you for watching, and see you again on the next show. Thank you. Aloha, Andy. Thank you.